Welcome to this webinar. Uh, so it's 10.30 now. I see that many people are still uh, joining us. So uh, let's start slowly. So uh, my name is uh, Lea De Haut. I'm the project manager of the Theory NDP. Uh, and I have me, with me my colleague uh, Ilaria Garampi, uh, who you know well already because she is the point of contact for project promoters. So um, uh, before we start, just a, a few words about this webinar. So uh, it is being recorded, uh, including all the, the questions that the comments that you might ask. So uh, afterwards, we will publish the recording of the webinar and we will also publish all the questions and comments received. Uh, we've also the, the name of the, the, the person who commented or asked a question. Um, uh, of course, we will also publish the slides, so don't worry if you miss part uh, of the webinar, you can access both the slides and the recording later on. So now we will uh, quickly go over the agenda and I will let uh, Ilaria present just um, a note now. So please, if you have questions, uh, connect to slido.com and enter the code that you can see here on screen, 923276. So that will be how we will take questions and comments in this webinar. So please do not use the questions tool in the in the GoToWebinar app. Uh, please go to Slido instead. And I, th I think that will make it much easier both for us uh, to reply to your questions and for you as well, because you can also see the questions asked by other participants. So uh, you can find also this uh, this code on, on the, the next slide. So now I'll I will move on and give the floor to Ilaria to present the agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Lea, and good morning, everyone. So this is uh, the agenda for today's webinar. And as you can see, we will start with an overview of the TYNDP 2022 development timeline. In particular, we will highlight all the relevant steps for you until the release of the final TYNDP package. And in this timeline, we will especially focus on the TYNDP 2022 project sheets, uh, when, why, and how to edit project data. Then Lea will explain to you what are the project level indicators and the project level indicators next step. And finally, we will provide with a provisional timeline regarding the public publication of the CBA results for promoters. Uh, today's agenda also foresee uh, a review of the key number of the TYNDP 2022 draft project portfolio. And as Lea already said, we, then we will answer uh, to your question that you are going to ask on Slido. In the final part of the webinar, we will also have a look at where to find useful information, useful material uh, for you, for promoters, and when are the upcoming workshops for, uh, for you dedicated to the project level indicators and to project sheets. And we can move on to the next slide. Um, Yes, here once again you can see the QR code to enter Slido or otherwise you can join it uh, at slido.com and enter this uh, hashtag. And then I will give back the floor to Lea um, for, the, for presenting you the, the timeline of the, develop, of the TYNDP 2022 next steps. Yeah. Thanks, Ilaria. So um, first of all, like a, like a quick introduction slide. So I, I think most of you are already familiar with the, the whole process and where the TUDP stands in the European framework. Um, so uh, as you might already be aware, so we start the TUDP with the with developing scenarios. Uh, then we collect the, the projects for assessment. So that's the, the submission window uh, which you use to collect your project back in uh, September, October of last year. In parallel, we, uh, we conduct a, a study which is called the identification of system needs. And we also perform the cost benefit analysis of projects. And uh, as you know, all of this fits into the, the PCI process that is led by the European Commission. Uh, so about the, the PCI process, it's not NSU's responsibility. We uh, just provide uh, input to it to, to help the EC regional groups um, 
select the, the projects that they, they deem are fit for the as a projects of common interest. Uh, so now a bit more, more in detail about the, the, the timeline and really the, the purpose of this webinar, which is really to give you a clear idea of what will be expected of you and when, and when are the, the time window when you can update your data, review your results, and really contribute to the, to the process. Uh, there will be other webinars later on uh, in the few coming weeks and months to really go in detail uh, in particular uh, about project level indicators and project sheets. So today we won't uh, be going into full detail, for example, of how to compute project level indicators. That's not the purpose today. Today the idea is really uh, so that you are informed of uh, what to provide and when, and when you can, um, when you are expected to provide input and which are the, the key deadlines for you to be aware. Um, so this is uh, really the, the, the full timeline of the, the UNDP uh, as far as promoters are, are concerned. So uh, as you may know, we have released the draft project portfolio uh, about three weeks ago at the end of January. You can find it on, on our website if you have, haven't uh, found it already. We'll give a few key numbers later on in this webinar. Um, the next step that will be coming in, uh, in about two weeks is that we will release the implementation guideline of the TUDP 2022. So this document is the um, uh, sort of the methodology. Uh, so it is uh, the explanation of how we will implement the CBA methodology uh, in TUDP 2022. So it gives all the details about how concretely we will perform the assessment of projects. Uh, it's a key document for you, uh, especially as it will contain information about the, the project level indicators that will be available in this UNDP. So it will list all the indicators and the, the data that you will have to provide uh, in case you want to submit those indicators. Uh, the time window to submit the, the project level indicators will extend until the end of June, to the, the 30th of June. Uh, as you can see on, on this slide. So that's four months, uh, which you can use to uh, perform your, first prepare your methodology, uh, perform the computations, and then submit the indicators. Uh, in parallel, another key date coming up in March is that we will release the, the updated scenarios. Um, so as you might know, the draft scenarios were published back in October for consultation. Uh, they have been updated uh, considering the, the comments received. And here, what's upcoming in two weeks is really the, uh, I cannot say the, the final version, but the version after consultation, uh, because the, the, the scenarios can only be considered final after a so opinion, and that will be uh, coming up later on. Um, also coming up in the, the few coming months, uh, in May to June, uh, will be a time window where we will contact you to ask you to review and possibly update the data of your project. So this will be um, important because uh, afterwards, when we we share the TDP for consultation, they will, uh, the data will be frozen. So that's really your chance uh, in case, for example, the, the status of your project has, has changed or the commissioning years has evolved or if you want to add any other information or correct anything, that's really the, the time uh, when you're supposed to do it. Uh, of course, you can contact us anytime to ask if it's possible to, to edit, but it will uh, not be uh, it will not be always possible, especially during the consultation and during the time when ESSA will provide its opinion. So I really encourage you to uh, to contact us as soon as you uh, as you think your, your data is updated, and especially to use this time window here from uh, mid-May to mid-June to review all your data. Um, afterwards, so as you see uh, here in July, we expect to be able to share the TUDP for consultation. So that's a consultation that's foreseen to last for about six weeks, from about mid-July to the first week of September. Um, as you as you may know, as per the, the guidance for promoters, we have that rule that we always share the CBA results 
uh, with promoters at least two weeks uh, before we publish them. And we also give promoters the uh, possibility to provide comments and we publish those comments in the project sheets. So uh, this time in this UNP, we will be sharing the CBA results in, uh, in two batches, let's say. So the first batch will come in June or July. Uh, so, so we'll share those results for, for review, review, uh, so that you can comment, and we'll publish those results uh, with the public consultation on the TUNDP. Uh, and then because also the, the CBA computations run sort of in parallel to the, the public consultation, because there was just no possibility to do it differently this time, we'll share um, the remaining CBA results um, later on in September, October, and run a a short review period review so that you also have the, the chance to comment on those results before they are um, uh, released uh, with the TNDP for, for SO opinion. Uh, as regards the, the public consultation on CBA results, uh, this is still being uh, defined. Uh, we will for sure consult uh, part of the results, but uh, not probably not all uh, at the same time. So uh, I think it's kind of the same uh, modality as the, the, the review by promoters. Um, and then the, the last step uh, in this 3 dp which is really the submission to, to ACE of opinion, will come uh, by, by the end of October at the latest, uh, which means that ACE opinion would be expected by uh, in January 10, 2023, and we, we would have the final team dp in early 2023. So if you have questions on, on this process, don't hesitate to, to enter them in Slido and we will take them on uh, later on. Um, now you move to the, the next slide, which is uh, a quick overview of what we plan to release uh, in the TUNDP package. So as usual, the scenarios are coming up uh, in about two, two to three weeks by mid middle of March. Uh, the system needs study. Um, so if you are familiar with past UNDPs, um, we, we publish uh, the, this, uh, the results of this uh, identification of system needs, uh, which we'll be looking at 2030 and 2040. Uh, so that there will be a report and also an online data platform. Uh, we also publish information at, uh, at regional level and at, uh, at country level on the needs uh, in specific countries. As usual, the TUNDP report and uh, like the main highlights and key numbers about the TUNDP and uh, the project sheets, uh, which um, we'll say a little more about this uh, in the coming slide, but uh, which are, as in past TUNDP, online pages and also available as PDF and as uh, Excel spreadsheet. And next to the, all these documents, we also, of course, release a, a lot uh, of data. Uh, you can see here the, the main uh, data that we publish. And by the way, um, we do not publish uh, all the data, but it does not, think, does not mean that it's not available uh, for you to access. So if in case you need something, feel free to contact us. Uh, we cannot share everything, uh, but we, we have so much data that we just cannot publish everything. So uh, don't hesitate to contact us and we can discuss um, what we can share with you and how. And I think now the next slide uh, is back to, to Ilaria to present. Thank you, Lea. Yes, so we will move to the part on project sheets to have uh, an overview of what are the project sheets. So this question is mainly for uh, project promoters that are new in the TYNDP uh, process and uh, may, may not be familiar with project sheets. So. Every project uh, in the TYNDP 2022 uh, will have a project sheet that is mainly a presentation of the project, providing the key information on the project. Um, and these are all information uh, provided by project promoters. But also uh, we will show the result of the cost benefit uh, analysis. Mm, which is mainly performed by Yansui, uh, but then Lea will also present the, what are the project level indicators. Um, so project sheets are used by the European Commission and the PCI regional groups in the uh, PCI process that stands for pro, uh, Project of Common Interest. 
uh, but they can also be consulted by other stakeholders and the general public as they are publicly available online. In fact, uh, when a project name is entered on Google, in Google, uh, the project sheets appear uh, among one of the first few uh, results. So you can, you can easily fi uh, find them online. Uh, project sheets are available in three different formats. Uh, in, uh, in the online formats, there is a project sheets platform that we will show later on. And from that platform, you can download a PDF version of the project sheets and also uh, Excel spreadsheets uh, of project sheets. Uh, then if we move to the next slide, uh, we can show you um, the project sheets platform, which yeah, it's um, is in uh, is in progress, so um, uh, it's not completely done. The one of TYNDP 2022, and uh, and so in and we are currently reviewing the content and the format of project sheets in order to improve their completeness, readability, and user friendliness compared to the previous edition of project sheets. Uh, these improvements are mainly based on stakeholders' comments uh, and also on ACER opinion on uh, project sheets uh, of TYNDP 2020, the previous edition. Um, so, for instance, taking into account these comments, what we will improve is the scenarios comparison in the project assessment part of the project sheets. Uh, we will add some bar charts to make it more uh, intuitive for the user. Uh, of course, as you can see, um, promoters' feedback on project sheets are very welcome, and uh, you can share them uh, sending an email uh, to me, or here you can find my email address. Um, and this is a screenshot of uh, more or less how the TYNDP 2022 project sheets platform will look like, uh, the main page will look like. And then, of course, you can access for both storage project and transmission project. If we move to the next slide, we, we can show you, uh, we can wrap up this information and show you why, uh, when and how to edit project data. So uh, promoters will be able to edit project data through the TYNDP 2022 project platform that uh, you should be familiar with because it's the same platform you have used to apply to the TYNDP. And uh, you can edit data between mid-May and mid-June uh, 2022. Uh, we will communicate you the exact dates um, and we will also send you uh, reminders during that period. Uh, when you can edit the data. Um, in May, as Leah already said, we will also organize a webinars for you uh, just dedicated on project sheets. Why you should update uh, the project platform and update uh, your project data? Mainly uh, because some information might have changed during between uh, September and October when you applied to the TYNDP project platform and uh, may june when you have the chance to update them and this information the information you you cannot update all the information but uh you could update for instance the project status the commissioning year or the link to the website of the project so all the information that will not affect the cba assessment uh, and also, uh, we will ask you to provide a few new additional information, but they will be really um, small, uh, small edits and uh, small additions. Uh, for instance, uh, what we would like to do in the project sheets is to um, improve a bit the project description of each project and to make them to show just the, the relevant information um, so maybe we will provide you a guideline on how to structure the, the project description so that you can make small edits to that part but we there will not be many changes in the in this part and uh, yeah here you can see again a screenshot of the project platform um, then uh, we, we can move to, to the next slide, and I think it will, I will give back the floor to Leah to explain you the project level indicators. Uh, yes, thank you, Ilaria. 
Um, so as I said, I won't go into too much detail here on this topic uh, because uh, these indicators can get quite technical and we'll have a dedicated uh, webinar on them uh, in early April. So as I said, we'll publish the implementation guideline um, in about two weeks and this guideline specifies uh, the indicators that are available for um, at project level in this UNDP and uh, what data to, to provide if you want to submit them. So uh, about the, the PLIs, so uh, there are indicators that are not computed uh, by NSOE because there does not currently exist a methodology at, at pan-European level to do a, an adequate assessment of these indicators. So that's why the CBA guideline uh, foresee that uh, promoters can be allowed to compute them and submit them. And then what NSOE does is that um, we just check that the methodology used by the promoter is compliant with the guideline. And that's it. So if the methodology uh, we find it is compliant, the uh, results for the project level indicators are published in the project sheet. Uh, and if we, we find that it's not, uh, I probably we'll just include a note in the project sheet that we, we were not able to confirm the compliance of this indicator. Um, so uh, a key document for you is really to refer uh, to the CBA guideline. So it is, uh, there is one version currently available on NSOE's website. Uh, we will publish uh, normally a slightly updated version quite soon, but we've very few changes compared to the version that's currently online. And the, the guideline, uh, the CBA methodology really includes all indicators and especially uh, the, the methodology that you are supposed to, to follow to compute them. Um, then in the implementation guideline for TNP 2022, we will specify specifically which indicators are available in this TUNDP because not all indicators included in the third CBA guideline will be available in this TUNDP. Uh, specifically, and because maybe some of you will ask that question, uh, compared to TUNDP 2020, there is definitely one indicator that, that will not be available this time. Uh, back in 2020, it was called indicator B9 um, avoidance of the renewable or replacement cost of infrastructure. So this one for sure will not be available. And the reason is that uh, it was due to some uh, comments received by ACER and I think also the European Commission, which did not see this indicator as uh, mature enough to be in the CBA guideline. Uh, so the full details really will be in the implementation guideline. Um, from the information I have, all other indicators that were in the TNP 2020 are also available uh, in 2022. So the, the main change is really regarding this indicator, or former indicator B9. Uh, here is a quick overview of the process. So uh, on the first week of March, we'll have really the, the, the details on what's available and the rules to, to submit the, the PLIs. Um, we will have uh, a specialized webinar to really uh, discuss them in detail. And uh, one new thing in the process is that we will uh, give you the opportunity, if you want, uh, to send us your methodology or your, your draft methodology uh, so that we can uh, take a look at it uh, before or during the, this webinar and give already our, our, our feedback on whether it is compliant with the guideline or not. So this is meant to really avoid some uh, some back and forth uh, later on and try to to smoothen the process, let's say. Uh, the deadline to submit the PLIs will be on the 30th of June. Then over the summer, July and August, we will review all submissions and ver verify their compliance with the guideline. And we will uh, contact you in case we need more information or uh, in case we find that something is not compliant so that you have a, a chance to, to improve and, uh, and, uh, and maybe review your, your methodology. Uh, by end of September, we will uh, take a final decision on each indicator to state whether it's compliant or not. Uh, and 
all the, the PLIs will be included in the TUDP package in the project sheets that will be submitted to ASO for opinion in October. Uh, one information to really note uh, right now is that we can only uh, review information that's in English um, because obviously the team that will be reviewing PLIs over the summer is an international team. So uh, we cannot, unfortunately, accept documents in any other language because then we would not be able to review documents. So in case you have already performed a study and it's not in English, please uh, think early about uh, forcing translation. Um, OK, that was all on PLIs. Now, uh, a quick note about the review of CBA results. So as I said earlier, we will be sharing uh, the CBA results for at least two weeks uh, for all scenarios. So that is what is forcing the guidance. Uh, in those two weeks, you can both review the results so, uh, and then let us know in case you spot any mistake or you would like an explanation on the, on the computations. And you can also provide comments on those results. And those comments can be inserted uh, in your project sheets. That means they are being published and they are uh, submitted with the TNDP. Uh, so we expect to be able to share more CBA results for the 2030 horizon uh, sometime in end of June or July, and to share with you the remaining CBA results in September, October. So the, the timeline here is not yet um, fully final, but it, uh, we, we will share more information in the, the few coming months. Uh, I saw, I think, already one question on Slido from NG asking if uh, all results of all projects are, are shared with all promoters, and yes. So that means that when we share the CBA results, you do not only access the results of your project, you can see the results of all projects. So that, that can allow you, to, allow you to, to compare and maybe understand better the results. Okay, uh, that was all on the on the CBA results. Now we move to the just a quick overview of the project portfolio, and then we will take your questions. Yes. Yeah, so as you probably already know, in January we published the TYNDP 2022 draft project portfolio. Uh, you can also we publish in the next in the next slide. There is um, a link um, that uh, through which you can access the. Mm, the portfolio, but of course you can also find the link on the promoter corner in the TYNDP website. And uh, in this portfolio you can find all the transmission project and their investment and the storage project included in the TYNDP 2022, as well as the known admitted project with the justification for the lack of compliance with the TYNDP 2022 guidance for applicants. If we go to the next slide, you can see some key numbers regarding uh, the portfolio. So uh, we receive a total of 171 projects. 171 projects were submitted to the TYNDP 2022 uh, between September and October. Um, and after verifying the compliance of, uh, of submission with the guidelines, uh, 141 transmission projects and 23 storage projects were selected for inclusion in the uh, TYNDP uh, 2022, so a total of 164 projects. Uh, instead, seven projects for transmission and three storage were found not to comply with the criteria set in the guidelines. Among the 164 projects uh, selected for inclusion in the TYNDP 2022, 129 are uh, old pro project already presented in TYNDP 2020, so in the previous edition, while 35 are new projects in the TYNDP process. Um, if we go, so this is all for the key information regarding the projects. And um, if we go to the next slide, yes, we can uh, go to the QA, we can start the QA session. So we will remind you to go on Slido to ask your question. And yeah, there are already some questions. So I don't know if you want to start. Um, yes, yeah, sure. let's, <clears throat> let's go ahead with the question. So, yeah. And this question, which I covered already, if, whether we share all CBA results with all promoters. So the answer is yes. 
you can access the results also of uh, not only your own projects but also other projects. Um, then the question from Stefan: uh, Will you publish indicators for different perimeters? So this decision on that is not final yet. Uh, for now, the the plan is to publish results um, like we did in 2020. So uh, to differentiate between results inside the ANSOE area and outside the ANSOE area. Uh, there is a question for discussion whether we, we will also publish, uh, in addition to that, the results for the EU27 and outside of the EU. Uh, one thing that's already clear is that we will uh, perform both uh, both split of benefits. Uh, the question just remains to be answered whether we publish everything or, or how we publish everything. So, uh, and whether it will all be in, in project sheets or not. Um, question from uh, Georgi, which software are you going to use? In what format the grid data set will be available? Um, so I do not have the answer to that question right now. Um, what I know about the, the uh, network model that, that we use, so it's not, uh, we cannot publish the, it in, uh, in full detail. Uh, we do publish some version of it on our website, uh, but most likely uh, this is which will be published um, at the end of 2022, so at about the time when we submit UNDP to ESO for opinion uh, around October. Uh, about which software we use, I, will, I would have to come back to you on that one because I, I just do not have that information right now. So I will just uh, note down that question and you can, uh, I can look into it and ask my, my colleagues in charge after this webinar. Uh, questions from Peter. When will we have finalized data sets for the study? Uh, it depends which data you mean. If it's scenarios data, uh, the scenarios data will be published in the mid of March, so in about three weeks. And yeah. So and if if you if you mean regarding to the publications of of uh, project level indicators, so I suppose what you need is mainly the, the scenario. So yeah, uh, in in about the middle of March. Uh, in the guideline, will there be specific indication for radio connection projects? Um, I do not know the, the guideline by heart, but I believe, yes, there is some specific indications about how radio connections uh, are being assessed. So to be, to be checked in, the, in the, the final version, but I, I know that's, uh, that's a new part in the, in the guideline in this UNDP where we have a specific part about hybrid offshore projects and different modalities to, to assess them. So, uh, I invite you to, to uh, take a look at the guideline when it's published and then uh, contact Ilaria uh, in case you have questions and she will direct you to the, the colleagues in charge. Uh, which CBA results will not be published in the first batch of the TUDP package? Uh, so I, I will answer that question by saying which CBA results will and should be published in the first batch. Uh, we expect to be able to release most results for the 2030 horizon uh, for market indicators. So that means many results for the scenarios uh, national trends 2030, definitely. And then uh, definitely the 2040 results uh, would be coming up later in September, October. So it's not fully clear yet uh, which what we'll have then uh, exactly in uh, batch one and batch two. Uh, we'll share more detailed information on this later on. Uh, can you share this presentation? Yes, we will publish the slides after this webinar. Will the UDP2022 package for consultation include CBA results? So the, the package for consultation in July will, will include part of the CBA results. 
uh, then we are looking into how to run a short public consultation on the remaining CBA results a little later uh, at the end of Q3 2022. So uh, I know it's almost certain that all CBA results will be consulted, but just not all at the same time. So uh, you will have a, a chance to review the results as promoter um, and also the general public will also get a chance at commenting on the results. Uh, will all project level indicators of the third CBA guideline be applicable to hybrid projects? Um, so in the methodology on PLIs, I, I do not think it specified uh, the type of project. So it really depends of the of the indicator, I guess. Maybe some of them are relevant for hybrid projects. Some of them might not be, but for this, I really do not know the details. So I invite you to uh, first consult the implementation guideline, then connect to the, this webinar we have in April. And if you still have questions, uh, contact Ilaria and we'll make sure to, to uh, get you in touch with, with the colleagues in charge of the, gui the guideline. Okay, I do not see any more questions, so maybe we can wait a couple of minutes uh, just in case there is some more. Uh, I hope I've answered to, uh, to everything so far. Uh, in case I, I've missed something, uh, just let me know. Yes, Leah, also the questions that are in the chat of the go to webinar, you, you have addressed everything because they have oh, okay. also, yeah, yeah, they were also slide the same slide. Up. Um, another question from Stefan. Do you need this? Sarah? Um, I do not know what that means. Oh, this data. Okay. Um, I do not think we need it. I don't think it was data that was requested in the submission window, and I cannot think of any reason why we would be asking for it uh, from, from project promoters right now. So, yeah, my answer would be no. No, for the map of projects. So, um, as you might know, when uh, when promoters create their projects in the platform, uh, there is a tool that allows you to draw uh, the the line or the substation or whatever investments you have. So, and so we do not collect uh, this data. We we ask promoters to to make a, a drawing, and so the, that uh, provides some data in a, a JSON format. So I think that answers that question. So if you have more, please uh, you can enter it right now. Uh, maybe in the meantime, Ilaria, you can quickly show the, the next slide, uh, which should be of, of interest. Yes. Um, so, uh, where to find the main material and information for project promoters? Uh, it's on the project in on the promoters corner on the TYNDP uh, website. Um, and here is also where we will publish the slides and the recordings of uh, today's webinar. In the we will publish it in the in the coming days. Um, but you can also find the guidance for promoters and other relevant documents, the uh, frequently asked question document, which will be update. We will update it with the new question you have asked today, um, and it's already available uh, on the promoters corner. Uh, then you can access from there the TYNDP 2022 draft project portfolio. Uh, there is the link to act access the project platform and the and of course you can also subscribe to the project promoter mailing list if you are not already uh, in there 
if we go to the next slide, I will show you uh, an, something new on the TYNDP website. Uh, so if you access the homepage of the website, you can find this orange box, which is called Discover the Life Cycle Steps of an Electricity Transmission Project. And uh, from there, you can see the steps of, uh, of the transmission project with some case story for uh, each step and also some pictures and uh, videos which has been provided by project promoters. So we, we invite you to, to have a look at, at that website and of course you can share your comments. Um, and then if we go to the next slide you can see the upcoming events that we have already mentioned during the webinar so we will have in april a webinar uh, on project level indicators and in may uh, a webinar dedicated to project sheets uh, of course we will send you uh, an email about informing you about the exact date of these two pro of these two webinar at least a week in advance uh, and then you will find also uh, the agenda in the link to register to the webinar on the on the TYNDP website and yeah, in the final slide, you can see that for any question, any additional question, you can contact me. And uh, as we have already said, we will share the slide deck and the recording of today's webinar. And we thank you very much for your attention. I don't know if there are any other questions. Um, on yes, slide. I can see one question asked right now. Um, just, I'm not quite sure if I understand it correctly. Uh, is the life cycle applicable to storage projects as well? Um, yes, yeah, sorry, I do not understand the meaning of the, this question. So maybe Joaquin, you can um, send an email to Ilaria, maybe with a, a few a little more details so that we can. Uh, can get, yeah, I get don't back know. To you. If maybe it was referring to the um, new page in the website that is about the life cycle only of transmission oh, okay. projects, maybe. Uh, uh, no, it's about transmission uh, only because it was information uh, provided by uh, by ENSO's members, the T TSOs. So uh, that where where we try to really map the different steps uh, for transmission projects. Uh, I do not think we have. I mean, as much knowledge, uh, do, if you don't have as, as much knowledge of, of the life cycle of a storage project, so maybe that's something we could do, but we just we do, we do not have the, the inside knowledge, let's say. Um, okay, if there are no more questions, then I believe we will close this webinar. Um, Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, yeah, we'll be in touch. Uh, we'll be in touch by email. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye.